Hello everybody, it's your girl Connie Kenneth and welcome back to my channel. Listen guys, I am so excited for this one. I have been waiting for such a long time for this one to come and I'm so excited that what am I finally you know, posted it yesterday. So I haven't watched it. I'm really looking forward to reacting to it right now with everybody um, on this channel. And so if you're not, you know, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe because this is the best reaction channel. Listen, I would like to thank Wodemeyer so much for um, actually just posting my video, you know, with the, when he was in Green Hook. And thank you so much for allowing us to use your content. And this is fantastic. And so we're going to react today to this video. So how the Himba tribe offers sex for visitors to visitors and bathe with no water. All right. So I am so excited. I don't know much about this tribe. Uh, I know they suffered a lot under, you know, what we saw in the last video from the Germans, you know, who wanted, you know, the German ge genocide in the 1900s. And so I, I know, I know, I know them because we see them in documentaries, but nothing much about them. So let's get straight into this video and let's see um, what's in for us. Let's go. What we read was when you come in here, if you come to the Himba village, like as he just explained, a man can give the wife to a friend, my brother, okay, yo, take care of him mm -hmm. sexually. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. Forget. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this video clip has really made us salivate, salivate literally for this video. So it's very funny just to see what the Maya's dancing skills. Ay ay ay! As a woman's hand, man. The wise man once said. Okay, so a wise man once said the literate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn and learn and relearn. Wow, that's fantastic. Traits of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn or learn and relearn. Yes, and that is all about life. I think it's very important to learn, to unlearn. So when we say to unlearn, it's just just doing away with beliefs that, you know, that were installed in us as we were growing up and you and relearn the new things by discovering ourselves and doing things that um, go hand in hand with what we believe in our, you know, just creating our life, you know? You know, I, I, I just want to know what do you guys think of the Himba people? Um, on my end, I think they're... I, I don't know much about the Himba people except what I was told because there's this stigma around them that they are feared, you know, like because of the witchcraft or whatever voodoo they take part in. So um, you never really get a chance to interact with them. It was always like as kids, if you see them in the street and they ask for anything of yours, don't fight them, just give it. Or else when you go home, your family member is dead or stuff like that. So uh, we just fear them like that. It's just... <laughs> And that's why I think it's very important to unlearn and to teach the younger generations that the Himbas are part of the Namibian culture and they're not dangerous people, that, you know, they should interact with them and just to unlearn the stigma and learn them and, you know, and start um, understanding their history because they have a very, very, very strong history and yes and um that just reminds us of what africa was before all the modernization uh you know that came and it's still continuing right now and i my question is uh do the himba children go to school because i believe that uh from the moment where they start going to school i feel that they get into the modern world and they you know they're caught up in in all the in the modern world just like the messiahs where you know the children now are going to school and so it's people feel that the the, the messiah culture and i believe that the 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 himba culture is going to die or it's going to be extinct so let me know in the comment section below what you think about um that and do you are there some Himba people who are now in the town and are back in the Himba village Oh, my God. 
<laughs> I think what am I? You should do some agility classes, you know. <laughs> Let me understand. Who made you believe that uh, the Himbes go witchcraft and all of that? Oh, uh, yes. It's stories once that you hear. Mm. Like, it's stories you hear. So, I mean, if your parent tells you, like, something about that, or, like, you're not, like, directly your mother, but your neighbors or, mm. like, your friend's mother told them that, then they'll come to them, like, it's a no, my dear, quickly cross her. This Simba guy is coming here, like, why are you scared? No, my dear, this like, mm. you know, like, Juju, your family, and, you know, so it's, like, just that, we're like, oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, because they have a very deep culture. They have very, uh, very... I would say they, they have some rights. And I believe back in the days, because people were not, um, you know, more educated when it comes to um, to this uh, traditions and this um, tribes, then it was seen as witchcraft because I don't know, I don't know what their religion is, but I believe they, 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 they call up into their ancestors, ancestors in the Hindu culture are very important. So I feel that all that, you know, all the dances around it, you know, and, and probably other practices that made people believe back in the days that they were doing witchcraft. Uh, so that really, so I feel that the younger generation needs to be educated more so that they can appreciate the Himba culture more. And I'm happy that finally an African is telling this story and not anybody else from the West. I'm not here to blame them, neither their parent, but mm. colonization made so many Africans hate their own, and I believe it's time. <laughs> he looks so himba right now. He fits in everywhere. To unlearn, relearn, and embrace our own. Right. <laughs> black is it what is the black thing around his neck so the the, the necklace what what's that well, it must be just a necklace i guess but the paint is it like a black paint uh, i can see some on his lips as well so let me know in the comment section below because i know the, the the red thing is the accra i think it's called accra but what's the black thing um on that is applied on the neck welcome to the himba village which is 40 kilometers away from wow look at that and there is a central place, and then you have all these houses around the, the central place. Wow. In the middle of the forest. It's fantastic. It's a simple life. And I think that they live 100% on the, on the cattle and the goats. I mean, everything in the Himba tradition evolves around the cattle. So it's fantastic. From Opo, I hope I'm mentioning it right. But hey, do you know the meaning of oh, What did he say? Away from Opo, mm -hmm. I hope I'm mentioning it right. But hey, do you know the meaning of Opo? Opo means the end from the hero language. I mean, the people of Himba are definitely heroes, so that's the language that they speak. Mm -hmm. We drove like 750 kilometers away from Vinduk just to get here. I mean, most of you will be wondering, Maya, why are you doing this kind of videos? I want to tell you that it's time. For Africans to take control of their own narratives. Mm -hmm. It's time for Africans to tell their own stories. You know, I've always wanted... Ooh, did you hear that? Take control. I love that. Take control of our own narrative. Take control and tell our story. Nobody knows your story better than yourself, you know. Um, and I feel that's a very strong message to the, to the African continent. Where And I'm so happy that so many young people are out there telling the African story themselves and by doing so we're educating the younger generation so that in turn they can be proud to be African and proud to tell their stories. To take Africa to the world mm -hmm. but I want to show you the positive aspect of Africa that no one shows you right. but I also realized that stories like this are missing. Right. Wow. Anytime you see stories like this on social media, it's always told by Caucasians, people mm -hmm. that don't look like us. And I feel like these are our own people and we just have to come in here and live just like them, know the way they live their own life. That is why it's very, very important. And I'm not here to tell their story for them. They are going to tell their own story. I'm just here to learn. I'm just here to educate myself mm -hmm. and I will use my platform to educate you. So this is what I want you to do for me. Like the video. Yeah. Very, very important. Right. 
and don't forget to share because this video is going to be very entertaining informative and also educative yes guys do the same do the same make sure you share my reaction video make sure you like it and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already wow. i love the, the the sound of the of the burning wood i love it i just love that ah it's so relaxing in the morning that's when they wake up the whole village that's when everybody wakes up and that's how they're woken up wow oh my goodness wow. already yeah it's the morning time now Oh wow. Do you know what we say? The early bird catches the worm. The early bird catches the worm. So uh, I feel it's always the best time to wake up very early um, in the morning so your days are longer, then you can do as many things as you want. You know, so uh, it's fantastic. And I love the way they're walking up. I guess everybody just meets around the fireplace or something. I don't know. Where is that? Find your head, please. Oh, sorry. What is it? Where do we go? Back to the kingdom. Yeah. Oh, going here. Outside, there's a fire. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yo, it's so cold, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so cold. Is he going back to sleep? I'm here, man. Oh. I must wake up at this time. No, no, Gerard. Take your blanket there. Yo guys, I'm smiling so much my cheeks are hurting right now. <laughs> I love this. I this is what I'm living for. This kind of videos is what I'm living for when we see how rich the African culture is, the heritage. Um, the people, the, oh my goodness, this is just fantastic. So sorry, I think I will be smiling so hard by the end of this video. My cheeks will be swollen because I, ah, oh, I love this. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Hi. So it's okay now, yeah? Okay. <laughs> moral. Mm -hmm. uh, moral, moral, okay. So does more mean good morning or does it mean hi? But I guess it's the same thing, but what is the literal meaning of morrow? Okay. On the we are going to sit there at the holy place hmm. and then we can talk stories. So mm -hmm. everybody will be coming here, all the men will be coming. They will oh. join us at the holy place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even the boys, they will join us at the holy place. So we can sit here. Mm -hmm. We can sit here. Okay. Little one. Did you hear what he said? This is where we sit and tell stories. And this is a, a typical African setting where in the evenings, you know, people just sit around the fire. And it's not a myth, it's a reality. And people just sit around the fire and they just talk stories. And, and that's how even children used to be told stories before they go to sleep. And um and and even in the morning, I had no idea. It's the same thing in the morning where people just come to. And I guess they just talk about the the day's agenda, you know what they're supposed to do and so on and so forth. But it's it's a communion time. It's a time for everybody to be together before the day starts. It's fantastic. <laughs> He's so close to the fire. Yeah, he's, he's going to move when the fire starts to light up. Wow. Yeah. So in, in most cases here, yeah, it's only for men. Oh, he's so sweet, the baby. Where is he? Oh. 
Oh my goodness, look at that. So in, in most cases here, uh -huh. it's only for men. For oh. women, they don't sit on this on this stone. Oh, okay. So what do women sit on? This holy place. They only sit there around the men. Oh. So in men here, they have to share stories oh, okay. about mm -hmm. uh, what happened, what are we going to do. Mm -hmm. So most of the stories we 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 keep it very secret from women because we believe that women do not have secrets. <laughs> Yeah, women gossip a lot. That's the reason why. But why? Uh, what are the secrets, the secrets that men talk about around the fire? Are they strate strategic things when it comes to the, you know, to the to the to the, to the tribe survival? Oh, that's interesting. But yeah, what could it gossip be? Gossip a lot. Yeah, they gossip yeah. a lot. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to go and we need to go to the place. We need to move from here to move all our animals from here to another uh, village. Oh, yeah, but then we have got like temporary two villages. We have got a permanent one and we have got a temporary one. So a permanent one, uh, a permanent one is is like this one. Okay. Yeah, this is a permanent one. But a uh, <coughs> temporary village, we only go there because of the the grazing. Oh. Yeah. So, oh, so. You have cattle in here? Yeah, you have cattle and goats, either any any type of animals you have, you are farming with, but especially the goats, and then we move them to that to that uh, temporary village. Mm. And when we have to move them, women are not always friend, uh, friendly with that. They always complain about moving. They don't like to move oh. because they always stay here with the children and things. Mm. But when you decide that I'm going to take this and this so you must keep it secret from them because you don't negotiate with them you only tell them that we need some girls okay. and maybe so if i get what uh, i mean if i get what he's saying is it's strategic then uh in the sense that women will always talk they have like a loose tongue and they talk easily to other people and since there are many villages the himba villages probably around uh they don't want to go to the temporary place um, and find other families there because they, because of the grass. I feel that um, maybe if they're moving, it means there's not enough grass and maybe it's a dry season and so they're going to, to a place where there's greener grass so, so that they the women don't tell other people about, you know, about them leaving. Okay, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's very interesting. It can be, uh, can be who? Kangadona can be you know, like that. Mm -hmm. And then they can make a choice. If they are five or six, mm -hmm. they can make their own choice to move mm -hmm. to go to which one will go to the temporary village. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, so, but I would like to know, I hope you watch, um, so uh, what am I is guide. I hope you watch this video. And I was wondering, um, so first of all, what's your name? Because we didn't get to know your name. And also, are you a himba yourself? Um, and because you know very well the Himba tradition. So let me know in the comment section below if you know this gentleman and if he's a Himba. So, and then you always, when you move to that temporary village, you mm. always don't want them to split the news. That's why you keep it sacred. Right. Because when your boyfriends come in the night, or friends come in the night, they will tell. Because they talk. <laughs> Women, they talk. And then they will say, no, no, no. Uh, we heard that our father is, is going to move to a, oh. a temporary village. Are you saying that the Himbas have a right to have a boyfriend, not husband, because he said boyfriend. Do they have a right to have boyfriends sneak into the homes at night and have, um, you know, sexual um, affairs uh, before marriage? Is that what he's saying? Let me know in the comment section below if you know uh, if it's allowed in the Hebrew tradition because in most traditions, no. I think most of them get married very young so they don't have time to have boyfriends and sleep with him before marriage. Uh, to that area, to the, maybe to Ochinungwa uh, temporary village. And if you mention Ochinungwa, then before you move, then mm -hmm. the other homestead or the other village will move before oh, you. Okay. So, and then they will, their animals is going to finish the whole vegetation. Uh, 
So it's always good as a good farmer to be the first one in the together. Egg. Yeah, and then you, you wow. discover all the vegetations and then they eat. I guess um, this is for the animals. Yeah, you this did, is, yeah. <laughs> you're doing this for the animals. Yeah, we do that for the animals. Yeah. Do you guys worship animals? No. Okay. Are they so important to you people? Yeah, animals are important that we use them to our during our ceremonies. You don't sell them. We do now, like in nowadays. Mm. But mostly our animals are important, not to sell, but to do a lot of our ceremonial mm. activities, mm. like uh, wedding, like different age of of the of the children, the boys, the girls. The boys mostly they go through circumcision, so we slaughter animals. Uh, the girls, they go through um, different stages when they are, for the first period, uh, for their first time when they are on period, uh, they, you slaughter animals. Um, oh, that's really nice. They honor both men and women because as a young man, you get into adulthood, I guess, by when you're be after circumcision. So they celebrate that. And then for the woman, when you, when you first get a menstrual period then they slaughter one. Oh, that's fantastic that's really nice i feel you know women sometimes we are left out um especially back in the days well it's maybe it's changing in the modern world but um you know always left out when it comes to important things you know like the fireplace where they cannot go to the holy place there is some traditions where women are not allowed to eat a certain um piece of meat it's only for the men and so on and so forth so i feel the himba they're beautiful people because they celebrate both men and women and so that's fantastic and they can have boyfriends who can sneak in at night hmm. when they have to change different hairstyles mm. you, you we slaughter animals mm. what if um your son is getting married yeah do women in here need um, animals or cattle that's um, dairy or something? Yeah, we need we need three cattles and two sheep oh, when, your, when your boy has to get married. Is there any lady in here who is willing to get married? <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing because he knows that I'm shooting my shot. <laughs> not a lot so the diary is three cattle and 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 two goats that's not a lot okay but i believe i thought it was more than that so it's it's okay it's not too bad because <laughs> <laughs> because you know like two carrots two sheaves it's not expensive yeah mm -hmm. so definitely i can get a wife here yeah <laughs> <laughs> no there, there are a lot there are a lot single women i don't know Maybe you have to talk nicely with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it depends. Okay. Yeah. As the rooster crows, everyone gets ready to start their daily morning routine. Also, the men sit and wait as the women prepare our bathroom ready for shower. Okay. I mean shower without water. Can you believe that? It only happens here in the Himba village. This is life. You're living together as a community. You're helping each other. There is love. There is uh, a lot of not materialistic at all. It's all about togetherness. It's all about women working together, the men working together. It's uh, it's a simple life, and most of us are dying out here, just running after riches and materialistic things, while life can be this simple and this um, beautiful. Do you see what I mean? And I love it. I love it. This is ah. Uh, I told you guys my cheeks are aching right now. I love this. Thank you so much for this video. Everything off? Yeah. Here we go. 
on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you check the link in the description below. Um, and he put a link, should he show women's breasts uh, on this video? And so I see that finally he decided to leave. Yeah, I think that's how it should be because that's how they live. There's nothing to hide about it. They're not ashamed to show their bodies like that to, to even strangers. So why should it be a problem? So I'm happy that finally uh, you decided to 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 show everything. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Himbers don't wear pants under their costume, so I had to remove my boxer shorts. It was a funny moment. That's <laughs> good, been doing. with hydrated iron oxide okay yeah. and okra is this uh, redstone is digged out of the ground and is coming in the form of this i mean it's a stone mm. and then it's it's not a very hard rock it's a very soft one okay. and then we crush it between stones and to make uh, powder okay. yeah and this powder is the one we wash with okay we wash like yeah how? we take bath and to us to take bath means to paint ourselves with okra. You don't, you don't use water. No, no. We don't use water. This is, this is our material. Can I, because I've not showered since morning. Yeah. You know, you can see my skin. I've not showered. So I really yeah. want to shower. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Did you know that they never shower at all? Does it mean at all they never, never use water? And is there a reason, a reason to that? Is it because the water is scarce? Or is it just a tradition? They never, 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 never shower. Now you are going to shower. Yeah. We, we are all going to shower. All the men are going to shower now. Oh, okay. It's going to be a shower time now. All right. Yeah. So they are going to prepare it. All the ladies are coming here for yeah. shower as well. Oh, okay. Yes. And what are they sitting on? They are sitting on the cow on the goat skin. Goat skin. Yeah, on the goat skins. Yeah. Must they always be good skin? Yeah, sheep, cow skin. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Wait, 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 wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And, the, you and this one you have to cover the front. Okay. Yeah. And then this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just thinking that they're butt naked, you know, under there is nothing. So that is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the this is butter. Yeah. This is butter. Butter. Yeah. You want to touch my skirt, butter? Yeah. <laughs> Where did you start from? Hey. <laughs> I'm not wearing anything, man. Yeah. What are you doing? It looks to be so, my goodness. There, you can just tell that the Himba are very comfortable around Warden Maya and his team because these are people who look like them and they're so comfortable. They can laugh about it. They can, you know, ah, this, this is so refreshing. You have no idea. I love it. I really want to know who are the people of Himba. Mm -hmm. So this people look at the hair. Is that like her hair? This is a question that I've been asked. I'm like, it looks like because it goes from down the roots. My and I believe they use the acre as well to to dye. I don't know to dye the hair, but is the black part her hair as well? It's long. For the Himba group or the Himba tribe is a is a nomadic group, so they live. From their animals. Okay. Their animals are the only source of living. So they have no much influence, or they had no influence of mm -hmm. more denizations. Mm -hmm. Where did they migrate from? They migrate from uh, southern west of Angola. When they came in here, who are the people that were present in here? Uh, they were bushmen, okay. which are sand people. Mm. The bushman left and gave them the land. Uh, yeah, yeah. There is a very strong influence. Well, influence. There's a very strong relationship between Namibia and South Africa with the Sun tribe from South Africa, and I feel that it's you know I don't know it's it's um, a very strong bond between all these tribes. Oh, uh, they leave a place because of the pressure. Mm. Uh, as the handed the the handed cows of the Hiba people. And the Himba, they were so mad at the Bushmen because they were killing cows. So they had um, uh, a little bit of fight. Wow. Then the uh, Bushmen, they were a bit uh, defeated. They moved in the southern okay. and eastern part of the country. Hmm. The they remain, they settle. Yeah. Okay. The over Himba are polygamous with an average of two wives at the same time. But the oldest man in this village has only one wife. Oh, Wait. Moro, Moro, can I shake your hand? Yeah. Ra, can I please ask you how old you are? Mango, me ango gujo gujo, no umbra ngapi. Majo ngoze tu angui. Lapu isa pongo. He said, oh, so many years. <laughs> so many years. He doesn't know the exact number. He doesn't know. It was very common. I remember my grandmother didn't know her exact age. She had no idea when she was born. It was just approximately. My my yes is one thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, um, he's married, right? For Yes, I'm married. How many? I'm married. How many? One wife. Is polygamy allowed in here? Mago Gugu Paga and Gumbanda Ume Guyanjera. Yes, it's allowed. What? What? Even three. Three? Why you didn't marry three? Oh, my job, we are. 
<laughs> the other one he says is unwanted. Unwanted. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. The people of Himba also practice early marriages. Like if you want a wife, you see this one. You can marry her. You see, and then you go through the ceremonial um, activity, and then you have to wait. You must be patient to wait. But then if you marry her when she's like that, okay. then the only last fight you have to do now is that you must win her. She has run away. She doesn't want her baby to go. <laughs> yeah, but if you understand, you can actually book or make a reservation of a young child, and then you have to wait until she's old enough to get married. Wow. So as we don't do anything with ages, but we do things with stages. Mm -hmm. So by this, by his age, then this is a time as a husband, you, I, you go there, and then you, you have a chat. So she, she, she get to know you, that ah, I was married by this guy. And this mm. is the one that shocked me the most. We read on the internet, like, if you are a visitor and come and visit the Himba village, they have to give you a virgin, like, especially, oh, welcome. A virgin has to welcome you into the... Um, oh, it's her hair. My goodness. Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. Wow. Community, is that true? Oh. Uh. Okay, uh, for the, the beginning I haven't, I haven't understand it very well, but uh, it happened, uh, it's not a virgin, uh, okay. if you come as a visitor and you are my friend, you got no place to sleep, and I have, as I have uh, got married to three wives or two wives, or maybe one, so I can tell my wife that that's my brother or my cousin, hmm. uh, tonight, go prepare a blanket for her, uh, for him, Just a it's happened, no, I mean, in the house. I don't understand. How can I say it? Can How does it, he doesn't want to really to say things as they are, right? <laughs> can, I, can I go? <laughs> go wrong, bro. Go wrong. No, no, no. Listen, like I, I, I read it, and I couldn't believe it. That's why I want you to say it for me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you can't believe everything that you see on the internet, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I want to know. Okay, let me go wrong. What we read was when you come in here, if you come to the Himba village, mm -hmm. like. As he just explained, a man can give the wife to a friend, my brother. Okay, mm -hmm. yo, take care of him. Mm -hmm. Sexually. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. Man, but that's your wife. Right. That's yeah, that, you alone, man. That's your, that's your wife. Himba uh, <laughs> culture is so different. Because this is made, is make uh, the lady not to start cheating, you know. I want to know really? what really... Uh, okay, not to cheat because I I feel the reason is not very valid in the sense that um, I guess it's just part of the tradition. I wouldn't say the women not to cheat because that's in the modern world where women can go out and cheat. As for the Himbas, I'm not sure. I guess it's just a tradition where you you that's a way of welcoming the wife, uh, the the friend. I don't know. I don't think it's for me, yeah, it's a little bit strange to think that as a woman that I can be offered to any man because just in the name of friendship or welcoming somebody. But I believe it's the reason might not be in the cheating part, but maybe more that's how it is. It's a tradition. Let me know in the comment down below what you think. Influence the way of life of the people of Himba because when I came in here, I'm not seeing men wearing shirts and I'm not seeing even the women not wearing bra. Everything is exposed. Mm -hmm. What really influenced that? Yeah, actually, us, as nomadic people, our main source, as I said, is animals. Okay. Mm -hmm. We get everything from animals. Right. We wear skin from animals. Oh. We get milk from animals. Whoa. We get food from animals. Mm -hmm. We get butter from animals. So, animals is the whole source of our living. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, even the clothes that everyone is wearing <laughs> yeah. is from an animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. So, so, this. Wow. Yeah. What are, 
they are building a new house. Yeah, they are building actually. Oh, it looks uh, a mix of sand again and maybe some cow dung. Because I know that's how my grandma used to do it. You know, we used to take the hot cow dung, mix it up with some soil and, you know. They are constructing a new roof. Okay. Yeah. Ah. And what are the materials that you use for building? The material we use for building is, um, this is actually Mopane branches. Mm -hmm. okay. And then after that, they, uh, they put on the cow dung. Okay, yeah. On it, yeah, on, on, on this, on the roof. Okay. Yeah, they will put the cow dung okay. on the whole house. They will put cow dung, and then, uh, and this is what they have. Clay. Yeah, and this wow. is the material. This looks like clay mixed with cow dung. Yeah, actually, yeah, they, they mix it, the clay with cow dung. With cow dung, yes. Wow. Yeah. So you're living in the house. So that's why you said your whole life. It's around animal. It's around it. Even your house is yeah, built no with Yeah, with cow. That's go waste yeah, in no the village. Mm -hmm. So what is he doing? So uh, what he's doing now, he's cutting those uh, branches. Uh -huh. Okay. So those branches, uh, we use it as plates for meat. Plates for meat? Yeah. Those are our plates. We eat even men, sometimes they sit on those branches and then they eat meat. Wow. Yeah, so that it cannot get uh, the soil, you know. We don't have plates. Oh, know? okay. Yeah. That's unique. Yeah. <laughs> and, and our meat is being served in big pieces as well. And it's being cooked in big pieces as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why are we doing this? So why are we doing this? This is a holy place. Okay. Where we're communicating with our ancestral. Okay. So it is always uh, important that you put fresh leaves, okay. fresh branch of fresh, of fresh leaves, uh, to show life. So that, any time you wow. slaughter a goat, yeah, a goat, or cattle, or sheep, you have to put a fresh, yeah, branch. Yeah. So I, if yeah. I can count, yeah, you guys have been slaughtered one, two, three. Okay, my own is four. Yeah. <laughs> what? No, this. Good. This is gonna be lunch. Because they will cook it, they will cook it for the whole, almost like for three hours. It will be prepared nice, cooked, himba way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to prepare the himba way. We don't put salt, we don't do anything. Oh. We only cook until the meat is well nice cooked. Oh. We don't put salt. We don't put salt. Just put pepper. We don't put pepper. Okay, no spices, nothing. But it's healthy, I believe. But it, I think it probably might just taste as a soup when we make soup from bones and not put anything inside. It must be very healthy. What do you put then? Nothing, water only. Only water? Yes. Just watch. While the food is on fire and getting ready to be served, they all come together to play. And this kind of game deserves a lot of energy. <laughs> Protect the things from dust, you know. Mm. 
Can we get water to wash our hands? Man? Yeah, water is here. Water is here. <laughs> oh yeah, but it must be impossible with the with all the the, the what do you call the ochre because it, it's just red, you know. Wash, wash. No, but I, I wash my hand. Is the red that is coming out? Right. Okay. Oh my goodness. You you see the the ochre is not is it's still on my hand. Uh, okra is healthy, man. It's healthy. I'm yeah. sure about that. Yeah. yeah. And why do I have to wash my hands then? No, okay. no. You just to take off the dusty bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But okra itself is healthy. You see, we, you see, when children are sick, oh. the babies, uh, we, we put uh, okra right. in water, we let them drink, and then they are okay in their stomach. So okra so is, was cooked just with... <laughs> He doesn't seem convinced. What am I? Doesn't seem convinced at all. Water. Yeah. With water only. Water only. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this is pap, eh? Yeah, that is pap. Okay. Yeah. Oh, pap. We're gonna taste it. Okay, already. so pap is uh, what is pap? What does it consist of? Let me know in the comment section below if you know. Tell you guys how it tastes like. Eh? Yeah. Okay, my guess is what am I will not enjoy it because there's no pepe inside. Pepe for him is everything. It's life. No, just just have a bite. No pepe, bro. <laughs> no sound. Ah, okay. <laughs> this is a new thing. You just have to get used to it, man. Yeah. <laughs> and that is healthy, man. Paper, paper make you sick, and those. No. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they make you sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. this, this one, original cooked one, is doesn't make you sick. You know? Men on their own, man. And how often do they eat this food? This food how often? Oh, oh, every day. Oh. Every day. This is so like does that mean they slaughter a goat every day? Does do they slaughter every day? Yeah, yeah. for the people of Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. every day. Every day. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So where are we now? So we are here at uh, Omungunda Kills. Okay. Yeah. It's about? It's about uh, singing and, tr uh, and dancing. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's where the name is coming from. Because the bass, or because of the bass that reflects down from the ground when people are singing mm -hmm. and dancing. So the dancing makes the sound. <laughs> The clapping of the hands and the sound make the echo. So that's what we call it. The whole combination we call it Omungunda. Wow. Omungunda. How yes. long has the cave been in existence? Oh, more than 400 years ago. Because Ooh. we do have paintings of the Bushmen as well. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Before the Himba people came. Yes, yes. Then... Yes, and the paintings existing more than 400 years ago. Most of the rock arts and paintings they exist for those years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Dancing here. Yeah. Okay, so I have to get a dance. Woo!
what it means. Oza, let me know if you know. So, after the dance, all of them go back to their village. This is how it is in the Timba village. Yeah, I mean, this is such a beautiful experience. I'm so glad that I really experienced this. And all I want to tell each and every African out there, I mean, get to know your own people. Get to know your own people's culture. And believe me, nothing is beautiful than African culture. I'm so glad I came to the Himba village. Say bye-bye to them. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That Say was... bye-bye Bye-bye. Oh, I'm trying to look for, a good, look for a good picture. That is fantastic. Oh, my goodness. I love it. My cheeks are literally hurting. I think I just smiled all the way. I took in so much energy, beautiful energy. Nice to see happy people, a beautiful culture, a rich heritage, and the African story being told by an African. So I loved it. I loved it. I, hmm, I'm telling you, I, I don't know what to say. So if you liked my reaction, please make sure you subscribe and make sure you share it out. Um, yeah, and make sure you, you know, you just tell a friend to tell a friend and to tell another friend. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and bye.